Hey guys, this is John with the Alpha Channel Update here in Los Angeles for Monday, July 15th, 2024. Just keeps trucking on, getting closer and closer to whatever's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. I am here for you guys to promote 26 hours of free science fiction fantasy audiobooks here on YouTube, Legacy of a Mad Scientist and The Legend of Ashley Fox. These are the best stories you have never heard, I promise you. It starts off with, uh, Dr. Fox creating a healing compound that makes him incredibly rich and then continues with Dr. Fox inventing the mind-computer interface, also known as the Micronics, which is exemplified by this amplifier right here. This is a amplifier. This hunk of living metal can communicate wirelessly with the forebrain if you pick it up and it likes you. If it doesn't like you, it'll, it'll melt your mind. And that's an awesome story called Legacy of a Mad Scientist. You guys will love it. Go ahead and listen to it. It's free here on YouTube on this channel. And we've also got a uh, comic book for what happens after those two stories. When Ashley, Dr. Fox's young daughter, is all grown up and is a kung fu superstar, she really becomes something of a legend in future Los Angeles. And uh, this is the comic book about her and Reverend Wolf dealing with a gang of Pizzagate child traffickers. And I believe this was completed in 2015. So I've been sitting on this for about 10 years. The books were completed even before that. So life throws you some curveballs sometimes and you just got to roll with the punches. Today we are going to review Yoshihisa Tagami's Grey Death Number 2. Now you guys might remember uh, Yoshimi Battles of Pink Robots by whatever the fuck that band's name was. It's not Fish. God, I'm spacing on it now. I'm not going to look it up. But I'm convinced that uh, it may have been taken from this story. Because Gray and his, girl, his new girlfriend, Nova, are battling robots. And check out this art. This art is so good. Even the still images are awesome. Now, this guy's not John DeSimo. He doesn't make every image look like motion, but it's good. So out here in the beginning, Gray, Nova, Chris, and Leo are stuck. And Chris is dying, and Gray shoots her, and Nova wants to bury her. And Gray argues that I'm not going to become a dead body while I stick around to bury a dead body. Because if they wait, they will be killed. So Gray has to spend a couple pages convincing Noah, Nova, that it's time to go. And Leo is with him, but Leo is wounded, and Leo really can't keep up. They are a thousand miles from their own lines, and in order to get back to their own lines, they're going to need to sucker in the enemy and capture one of their vehicles, but they can't do that in the open, so they head toward an abandoned village where they are going to set an ambush. And they have what's called a bee, which is like a little drone. It's right here in this panel up here. It looks like the uh, drones out of Star Wars that Luke Skywalker would fight with the lightsaber. And it, it has the same function as that eight-legged sort of octopus at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, where it reports back to the enemy. And so they set up their ambush and uh, wait for the enemy to come in. I just, I love Yoshihisa's artwork, and, uh, or maybe I should say Tagami's artwork, because they call each other by their last name, and I'm guessing his, his name is Tagami Yoshihisa, is the way it would be pronounced in Japan. So here they, uh, <clears throat> the enemy launches a mortar at them, and there's, before they get to the big enemy, they're going to have to deal with a small enemy. And they take cover, and Gray, uh, Leo, volunteers. Leo knows he's not going to make it. So Leo runs out to draw their fire and allows Gray to use his, um, his targeting device to find the enemy and destroy them. But Leo dies in the process. Now this time, so here's Gray returning fire. I love this book. I love the action lines. I love the desolate landscape. 
I love how he does so much with so few characters. I love this fisheye lens. Look at the, how the, 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 the buildings lean in on themselves to create this atmosphere of dread. And this is where they set up their ambush. Excuse me, uh, that was rude. But this is where they set up their ambush and they activate the bee to call in the, uh, uh, the other squad that they are going to attempt to take out and steal their vehicles. So here come the vehicles. Now this tank right here is in on the front page and you can see, look at how leathery that fabric looks behind the barrel. What a great job he did without even really any rendering. He just, this guy's a brilliant artist. Now I am gonna have to skip some pages, but that's coming up. So here Gray and Nova take out the enemy. It's quite a, quite a battle. And Gray gets in a duel with this soldier here on this page. <clears throat> and they they both hit each other, but Gray's only wounded, the other guy's killed. So Gray got a shot, basically a liver shot, but maybe it missed his liver and he's okay. So here he and Nova realize that they are, that they can't stick around, that there is a bunch of resistance or scavengers. Basically what would have been former soldiers or sit, uh, non-citizens who fled the cities because they were too violent. And now they're out here, you know, scavenging any scrap metal or whatever they can find to survive. So Gray and Nova back out slowly and then hightail it out of Dodge. And they are heading home for breakfast. Bacon, eggs, grapefruit, and orange juice. Doesn't that sound good? So that's the end of the first issue. They are successful on their first campaign, Gray's 15th campaign, Nova's first. And here they are, this is the second issue, they are heading back to civilization, where they have to compete for credits to potentially become citizens. Look at this shot. Man, he does not spare the detail. I love this artist. I love him so much, Yosuhisa Tagami. I didn't say his name at all yesterday. I need to say it a lot because we've only got nine of these. Maybe I should only do half of these a day. I think that's what, well, yes, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stretch this out to 18 issues. Well, it'll be 17 issues. You know, honestly, <clears throat> let's keep going because there's some interesting stuff that happens up here. So here they're dealing with Big Mama. Big Mama is the name of the computer that runs their village. And they faced a village that had more weapons than anyone they'd faced so far. Gray is noticing that not all villages are equipped the same. Not all villages have the same level of armament or expertise. Some have a lot less. And Gray is putting it together that they're all handled by the same computer. This is essentially like Stanley Kubrick's, I'm glad I didn't stop because this is important. You guys should watch Stanley Kubrick's Paths to Glory with Kirk Douglas. That's about World War I, where the generals bragged that you don't get medals if you don't lose men. If the battle isn't difficult, then it's just, it's not considered a win. If you are, as a general, use strategy and defeat the enemy without losing men, you're not considered a great general. You're considered a greater general by how many men you lose, and yet your men overcome the enemy. That is a horrible, that is a, that is an elite's way of looking at people as cattle. That's, in World War I, there's an argument that World War I and World War II, especially World War I, was fought to thin out the ranks of the population. Remember, they had just had a Luddite revolution, where the Luddites were a group of people who smashed the steam engines because the steam engines were going to put them out of work. And now that term is just considered like an idiot. Most people don't know that the Luddites were actually a real group who were being put out of work by steam engines. And so there was a whole generation of men murdered in World War I by the elites of Europe who, to make way for industrialization because they wouldn't have jobs for them. 
There's a whole group of men murdered in World War II to make way for the same thing, for increased industrial, industrialization. The brother wars are murder rituals done by the elite against the populace. They see us as cattle. That's why the Jews call us goyim. They see us as cattle. So now here in gray, here, here Nova and gray are being processed back into civilian life. They're not citizens, but they are civilians in this, in the rear, in, back in the city. And Gray is being, is now been upgraded to Trooper B, to class level B. And he's found out that he's not fighting just people. He's also fighting androids, what they call dolls. So some cities have dolls or androids running the machines. And though they don't, dolls don't give as many credits as human victims, which is interesting, isn't it? So imagine if you were in the battlefield and you're not promoted for downing a drone, but you are promoted for killing a person. It really tells you a lot about what these Jews and Masons and elite bloodlines think about us, doesn't it? This Japanese guy really had it right on the money. And this is how the samurai treated the civilians in Japan for centuries. So Gray, Nova wants Gray to stay with her in, uh, in the city. But he's like, no, I've got a car. I'm going back to my place. And Nova, like a thirsty girl, invites herself along. She's not leaving Gray's side. He's her meal ticket. Now, she's done nothing but criticize him the whole time and tell him everything he's doing is wrong, but everything he tells her to do pays off. And she is slowly coming around. And she's ceased with her constant criticism and is now quite literally, you know, riding gray. She will not leave him. But when they get to his place, she tells him it smells and that she wants to go back to her place over here. So she tells him, no, we can't stay here. We got to go back to my place. So gray goes along, but he's not, you know, oh, I may need to cut out some of this because Nova immediately gets naked. So yeah, I don't think you can see any breasts in this page. But yeah, she immediately takes her clothes off. In the cartoon, you know, she and Greg sleep together. But in this, they don't show it. In this, they just show, show some bobs and vagine. So I'm gonna skip those pages so my channel doesn't get a strike. And now we see Red out in the field and he is being attacked. Well, they're talking about, first they're just talking about what's going on. But now those, those scavengers that we saw back in the city have arrived with a tank and they, dis they uh, attack Red. Red and the other guy who's with him. There's a missile incoming. I love the way Yoshihisa draws fire and smoke and explosions. They're animated even better in the cartoon. The way the smoke and the fire rolls in this book is so good. It's almost as good as the vehicles, almost as good as the characters. The characters are really the best part. And Red gets hit. Gray hears the explosion because it's actually pretty close to the village. Red and those guys don't sit so far out um, in, their, in their vehicle. And Gray hears it and he's gonna go check it out because it was close to where his apartment is. And his helmet is back in the apartment. So here uh, we've got Nova. And I'm going to cover up her B, maybe C cup breasts here. Uh, but yeah, they, she asks him what he's doing. He says he's going back for his helmet. And she's like, why do you need your helmet? And he's got, he says, I've got, he, basically her argument is, why do you need Lips' helmet? You've got me now. And his, his response is, I've got an odd shaped head and it's got holes in it. So it fits. This is a little bit like Bruce Willis and his dad's watch in uh, Pulp Fiction. He's going back for the helmet and he gets, he gets out there and learns that, oh, look at this, look at this panel. I love how few panels he does. There's no nine panel pages in this book. You're lucky when you get a six, five, six panel page. Most of them are three. And so Gray gets out there and discovers that Red has been hit they say that he's been wiped. I don't know if Red's dead or not. I don't know how different this is from the cartoon. Like I said, I've never read it. I never collected all of them. I had a few and then I bought some more. And I'm not even sure that the nine that I have are all of them. So 
Yoshihisa Tagami. I've got four of number one. Um, yeah, let me know you want a number one and, uh, you know, pay for shipping. I'll send it out to you. I've got four of these. So this is an awesome, awesome comic from Viz Media, originally published in Japan under some other name. It says in the book, but I'm not going to look it up right now. Today we are going to move on to the Ace of Air, the Wildwood Tarot. Before I tell you what the card is, let me show you the box, just in case you haven't seen this before. Wildwood Tarot comes with a beautiful book that explains all the cards. And today we have the Ace of Arrows, the, uh, the Breath of Life. Now I'm not sure what's going on down there on the ground. It looks like there's an island and then an archer, and the island is somehow shaped in sort of a watery symbol. I don't know what that symbol is. It may mean something to the artist. It may be a signature for all I know. But I love this deck. I love these cards. The arrow is being shot straight up into the sky, which is a little bit like one of the panels in my comic that I'm working on right now that I have not shown in quite a while. For a few reasons, I have done some more work. I suppose I could dig it out right now. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Give me just a second. Let's see what we've got. I, um, you know, there's the whole thing going on with, you know, they like to call President Trump the former President Trump, like he's not going to be the next president. And I heard someone say that that's a measure of disrespect, and the left is giving every measure of disrespect they can to white people. They even, I heard that someone on The View had gone and said that, of course it was a young 20-year-old white male, they're the most dangerous people on the planet. And you know what? You're fucking right. You better not forget it. The race war is coming and there will be no quarter. 1911 plus 1488 equals no quarter. 1911 is my gun, Kimber. She's beautiful. 1488 is the 14 words. The 14 words are, if I can remember them, to secure a homeland for white people and a future for white children that the, be that the beauty of the Aryan woman may not perish from the earth. Because that's their goal. Really, what this is all about, white women, they've suckered you into this, but you're their target. You are who they want to destroy. And it's out of pretty privilege. They're jealous. There's no creature on the face of the earth as beautiful as a white woman. The Swedish bikini team? Yeah. That's what's going on. They want to get rid of you. And all you white girls with black kids who end up with black eyes and no, no daddy, it's karma. It's what you deserve. It's what you deserve. And I don't mind saying it. I'm not into race mixing, neither was Muhammad Ali. Nothing wrong with the bluebird going with the bluebird and the blackbird going with the blackbird. So here's some art. I'm just going to flash it. None of it's especially great. I have been working, but I want to bring this up because one of the Alpha Channel ideals is you need a clear conscience to sit down and do art and make it feel right. And the last few days, I just have not been feeling it. Oh yeah, this is for Mom's Got No Head for the cover. I just have not been feeling it because it's hard to have a clear conscience with this much anger. And this much frustration. I don't want to say hate because hate means someone specific. And there's no one specific. There's, there's no one specific. I just, you know, I despise what this country has become. I despise the way white people have allowed themselves to be disrespected and taunted by third world savages. We don't owe these people anything. So I suppose we went from a good spot to a bad spot, but I'm gonna try and save these little diatribes for the end because I know most people don't watch even a third of these videos. They turn them on and decide whether or not they like the look of the person and then turn it off. So yeah, we're just gonna stop here today. I love you guys, whoever's watching this far. Uh, I do have love in my heart, but I have an equal amount of power and hate. So it's, you know, the two wolves, an angel and a demon, and y'all better help. <laughs> Y'all better hope you never have to see a good demon. Give me a reason to want to be an angel. See ya.